Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining our Twitter space. We have a ton of exciting things to talk about today. So buckle up and let's get ready. As a reminder, please click that blue button that you see at the bottom of our space um, that will share this tweet out. We'll have a bigger audience, more people to share the knowledge. And that is always great. I will also share our tweet up here um, for the link. So if you could share that as well, that would be great. My name is Lana. I am the communications manager at Across. And today we have people both on the Across side and the optimism side speaking. So we have Nick, who is our Across technical lead. We have John, who is our tech evangelist at UMA and Across. We have Will, full stack engineer at Optimism. Veronica, who is head of community at Optimism, and Zane, who is Optimism's product manager. So, hello, everyone. Hello. Hey there. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Great. So, now that we have that out of the way, we are going to be doing a deep dive on the recent release of Across V2 and what it means for L2 users like you. We will also be doing a deep dive into Optimism's new releases, such as the Optimism Collective, and of course, talking a bit about the token drop. So for those who just came upon this space and aren't too familiar with Across and or Optimism, I would like to give you a little introduction on both sides. So starting off with Across, Across is a cross-chain bridge that currently supports bridging back and forth between L2s and Mainnet, with Optimism being one of our supported chains. Across prides itself on its security, low fees, and near instantaneous transfers. And then introducing Optimism. Optimism is a layer two scaling solution for Ethereum that is closely aligned with Ethereum's technology and values. Optimism lowers the latency and cost of Ethereum by orders of magnitude while donating 100% of centralized sequencer profits to public goods. So those are my summaries on both sides. Did I miss anything for either? Sounds All right. good. All right. Looks like we're moving along. So as I mentioned, um, one of our first topics that we're going to talk about is Across V2 being launched. So... With this space, we have Optimism users listening. We have Across users listening. So, John, could you tell us what exactly Across to, Across V2 means for Optimism users and Across users? What features can they expect with this new release? Yeah, I think the biggest one, the most obvious one, is direct L2 to L2 transfers. So across V1 only had L2 to L1, and we were trying to solve the fast withdrawal problem for optimistic rollups. Uh, with L2 to L2, now you can jump from uh, Arbitrum to Optimism, Optimism to Boba, um, between uh, L1 and uh, you know any number of L2s. Um, so it's really a lot easier to manage. And I think it's something that's necessary to go to an L2 focused ecosystem. You need to have that ability to move really quickly between chains in a gas uh, efficient way. Um, during the V2 launch, I actually sent 0.1 ETH on a round trip across all of the L2s and Polygon that we support. And I think it took five minutes and it cost me like 0.0001 ETH to do it, um, like something like two bucks if I have the right number of zeros. So that was just really impressive as a user. And then it's super capital efficient. So all of our uh, liquidity is still concentrated on L1, just like in across V1. And relayers on each chain are reimbursed from that L1 liquidity pool. Um, and because of that, you're able to bundle a lot of things. And so it's really efficient in terms of uh, uh, your data use and everything too, that if you're a relayer on Optimism, you get reimbursed on any chain that you want. And all of your relays from various chains are going to get bundled and uh, sent along with all the other reimbursements for all of the relayers that want to get reimbursed on a particular chain. Um, so there's a lot of uh, netting that way, too. And I think that in the long run, we'll be leaning on relayers to be really efficient in allocating their own capital because they'll earn more fees if they uh, get their relay funds onto the chain where it's going to be needed. Um, so that's one of the big problems for these uh, cross-chain bridges. It's like, how do you move liquidity between chains in an efficient way. And there's various approaches to it, but ours is a very market focused approach where you earn more fees as a relayer if you're in the right spot. 
Um, and then another thing too, is you can do partial fills. So if somebody's trying to move uh, $2 million from Arbitrum to Optimism and a relayer that's there only has $1 million available, other relayers can step in to do the rest of the fill. And so that was a big new feature before you kind of needed to do all or nothing. Um, if you didn't have the capital to fulfill it, you'd have to wait about two hours for the slow relay. Now you can still do a fast relay as a team effort. Definitely. And either Nick or John, could you explain a little bit too with partial fills, how it benefits both the user and the relayer? I know there are benefits on each side. Yeah, I can take this one. So if you, uh, in the cross feed one, you had to fill the entire deposit, which um, meant that if you, if there was a really large deposit, um, it might not get filled by the relayer. But now today you could actually fill it with as little as one way and still be able to earn some fees. So what you could do is say you're a relayer and you have extremely little capital, but you want to earn some fees, you can flag a deposit and you're doing, you're providing some work to the network in that case, and that you're making the network aware of a, a deposit and you flag it with like a one way relay. And then in after the challenge period, um, that deposit will actually get filled. So the user will earn um, some benefit. It'll be a, a slow relay, but they'll get it in two hours. The, the zero way relayer or the one way relayer will get re, will earn some sort of reward and the the funds to pay um, the recipient will actually be taken out of the, uh, the main the main LP pool on main net and will be bridged over the canonical bridge to the L2. Amazing. Great explanation. Thank you. And so Going off of that, so, you know, with Across V2, we've said we have L2 to L2 transfers, we have higher capital efficiency, partial fills for relayers, but with all of those features being said, what benefits will OP users experience? So what does higher capital efficiency actually mean for the user, for someone who is going to optimism? Um, so going to optimism, you'll, you'll, you'll get like a little bit of a speed up in, in, in the happy case going to optimism right now. Um, you need to wait for, um, like an L1. Um, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure of the terminology, but the, the transaction needs to be broadcasted to the L2 and it takes, I think anecdotally about five, 10 minutes today. And if you go via the bridge, you can basically pay a relayer, um, for the privilege of getting there faster than five minutes, like usually two minutes. Um, the real benefit comes from L2 to L1, where you can bypass the seven day window. And you can do that today via other bridges like hop. But I think the main difference between across V2 and hop is in in hop, you're guaranteed execution, but you're not guaranteed the price that you execute at because you're, you're going through this cross chain AMM and AMM sub slippage. But in the cross, um, you if you get filled, you will get filled in the amount that you requested minus any fees. Um, the the trade-off though, is that you may not get filled immediately if relayers are collectively short on liquidity. And I think that that's um, something that is semi-true for hop too, that you could run out of liquidity on hop um, if there's a lot of heavy usage, but it would be in a AMM pool versus um, like the relayers. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, great. And then just to um, kind of talk a little bit more to um, about what Optimism users will experience, just as side notes, um, with all of the higher functionality that we have with Across V2, we are not sacrificing any of our security. That is at the forefront of our pillars is security. So that is not going to be sacrificed with anything with Across V2. And then, of course, our low fee commitment still stands um, with the higher functionality. We still have so much pride on our low fees and that will continue. And so just going off of our features, um, also, I'm sorry, for some reason, the world's loudest lawnmower is in front of my apartment. So apologies if you can hear that, which I'm sure you can. Um, but so basically, what can um, Optimism users like expect to see with any differences while using the bridge? So I know that, you know, a lot of this is under the hood. Um, are there things on the front end that people should expect when they're using across this bridge? Or is it all pretty much in the background? 
I think it's the yeah, L2 so... to L2 thing. Yep. For sure. That's like the thing that really stands out. And then I think the fees that you'll see, like the fees are lower uh, just in general, but they're really, really extra low if you're going L2 to L2. And so that just really stands out. It feels like a totally different experience, even though the interface looks very similar. Um, it feels like freeing, like I'm not dragged down by uh, like a hundred dollar transaction when I'm using a bridge. It's going to be like 50 cents and I'm over on another uh, inexpensive chain. Yeah, definitely. Across V2 definitely aims to be like a one-stop shop for bridging. And so this is more theoretical. I just kind of wanted to see if anyone had any ideas um, of what kind of potential partnership opportunities V2 could enable for those using or building on Optimism. And this could come from both like our Optimism team up here or their cross team. I just kind of wanted to hear if anyone had some interesting like high thinking thoughts or something. I, I think the most exciting thing about V2 for me is it's going to be able to onboard a lot more people into the L2 ecosystem, uh, whether that's trying apps on Optimism or um, other L2s. As you mentioned, Nick and John, um, I think you know paying a hundred dollar fee for transferring in uh, twenty dollars doesn't make a lot of sense. And uh, I love what you guys are doing here with uh, keeping the commitment to low fees. Um, and I'm just super stoked about um, yeah the more people that are going to get to see like the near instant transactions that happen on the L2 side. Yeah, um, I think an interesting thing that a lot of people are talking about, but seems pretty far in the future is uh, the idea of kind of living in a cross chain world uh, or a cross roll up world where users have more than one roll ups, um, but making the UX of such such a thing good. Um, and there's, there's a lot, you can go a lot of different directions with that, um, all the way to the point where users don't even know what chain they're on. That's kind of like the ideal that we'd like to reach to. But in the short term, um, I'm wondering like, how are, how is across thinking about this? And is there anything you're doing to try to try to kind of like bridge the, like bridge the experience between different chains? Like for example, a thing that a thing that would be interesting is maybe like having a widget that um, DApps can use in their in their DApps so that they can use across to get from one roll up to another without having to leave the site. Um, are you doing anything like that? Or I'm curious what your thoughts are about that general the general UX of multi chain. I think there's definitely ways that you could integrate across into other protocols that try to obfuscate what's going on under the hood to get you like better interest rates, for instance, or better um, uh, swap execution. Uh, so basically, I think about this for cross-chain swaps, and this isn't necessarily for a cross. It could be somebody using a cross. Um, you could uh, have the recipient uh, for a transfer be a smart contract that's going to execute a trade. Um, or maybe some future version of a cross where you're able to say like, hey, I want to swap ETH for USDC and I want to get the USDC on Optimism and the ETH is on Arbitrum. And you're able to actually, um, you know, use the a cross bridge to move the native tokens around. And the relayers in that case are executing a swap versus um, just bridging the same token. So it's some extra steps, but I totally see that as a future thing. And I think in the long run, too, Uma's optimistic oracle is really great for this because you're able to use it as a magic mirror to everything that's going on on all the chains. So I think about this if you had like a view of all of your assets on every chain instead of switching between chains and MetaMask, which is kind of annoying. Uh, you should be able to use that on every chain if you're using the optimistic oracle to take your kind of global balance. Um, that's a more advanced technique, but I'd be really interested to see somebody build that out. And I think that's kind of like a future that you need um, if there are a lot of different rollups that are all communicating with each other. And then you still need the basic bridging. Like the at the end of the day, there is some token and it is on some chain and you have to move it between chains and across as the token bridge might get um, further and further uh, down in the, the stack in terms of visibility that you might be doing other stuff. And then across is just the best bridge and it's underpinning all of that because you eventually do need to move the actual tokens around and not just the the knowledge that somebody has tokens in one place or another. 
if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes a ton of sense. It's really cool. Okay, awesome. So I do think we have a lot more to cover. Um, so I just want to pause really quick and see if there are any questions from either, um, you know, across the side or optimism um, about V2. This is your chance that you can come up to the stage. Um, I see we have one request. Okay, Abundance, you're added as a speaker. Did you have a question for the team? Abundance, it looks like you're yeah. muted right now. Um, thank you. Just one question regarding the Optimism Token Utility. So, uh, since it will be used for the governance purpose, so something like ZK Sync, where uh, not only ETH, we can even use the other tokens for the gas fees. So, is there any kind of plan or idea to include Optimism uh, Token as well to be used? Uh, as a choice instead of ETH for the gas fees? So there's actually a uh, governance proposal, I think, right now discussing this. So you should definitely go uh, and check out our governance form if you want to get involved in the conversation. But I think we certainly internally did not have plans um, to use it as a gas token or to use any other token as a gas token other than ETH. But you know, we now have uh, governance. So if uh, that is something you would like to see happen, you should go uh, and talk on our governance about it and, um, you know, get involved in the governance process. Yeah, I can add to that. Um, just to echo uh, what V said, yeah, definitely get involved with the governance. Make your voice heard that this is something you want. I think, I think for us internally... Um, a thing that we really focus on and a thing that I noticed from reading across his docs that they focus on too is um, is the value of simplicity. So a roll-up is, is, is completely uh, EVM equivalent and that makes it a lot simpler to build, a lot simpler to deliver a good user experience, a lot simpler to, to audit. Um, it, makes, it makes everything better so there's definitely always a complexity trade-off for adding stuff like that um but yeah it, it, if it's something I, I i can definitely see the value to the user for being able to pay in multiple tokens i think um i think what we should probably do is go more of the direction of using more meta transactions so not only could you use op but you could use usdc or you could use um any any token, any ERC twenty token to to pay gas fees. That's something that um, is possible today, but the UX isn't quite good. But um, yeah, I guess I guess any any other any thoughts any other thoughts on that, Zane, from from the product side. Um, I, I think both of you guys hit the nail on the head. One related to um, we'd love to see the community get involved um, in governance. Um, whether that's jumping on Discord and sharing ideas there or making a more formal proposal. Um, we're, we're always ears and um, as well as like my Twitter DMs are open. So if you have any ideas, please feel free to share um, through any medium. And then what uh, Will said around simplicity, I think that's top of mind. Think about uh, your Web3 experience to date. Uh, managing your private key was uh, a pain in the butt. Um, managing um, all your different wallets, managing uh, where your assets are across the ecosystem and on different chains is, is pretty complex, right? Uh, so when we think about onboarding, you know, the next um, thousand or million users into crypto, we want to keep simplicity top of mind. Um, so whether that comes through meta transactions, as Will mentioned, or keeping ETH as the primary um, uh, gas fee, I, I think that's yet to be decided. Um, but yes, simplicity is definitely uh, top of mind for us as we think about uh, uh, building optimism. I do have a question about the optimism token as it relates to across. My impression is that it's mainly useful if it stays on optimism. So there wouldn't be much reason to bridge it outside of just trading if there's some like difference in price from one chain to another. Um, but I'm curious if you disagree with that or, and you think that there's some reason for the optimism token to go abroad occasionally. 
Um, this is something I was thinking about. Uh, this is I'm not representing optimism here, but um, this is a random idea I thought of, which was the idea of of um, having like embassies. <laughs> um, I want to again mention this is not something I've even talked to anybody at Optimism about, but I thought it was a cool idea where um, say some other L2 has a token. Um, it'd be cool if we could kind of um, because we do work together a lot on things like EIP 4844 and stuff. And we have a common goal of scaling Ethereum. It'd be cool if we kind of had embassies set up on other chains such that if you're within the Optimism embassy on a different chain, um, the Optimism token can be used there to kind of represent like we're like the optimistic community on this chain. Um, and yeah, that that was just a random idea I was thinking of the other mm. day. I thought I thought it was interesting. That's really cool. Um, there's actually something that uh, is a contract I wrote <clears throat> called the Optimistic Governor that's meant to be used with Gnosis Safes. Um, and uh, basically, we're using Uma's Oracle to um, uh, enforce the results of snapshot votes or enforce some set of off-chain rules for governance of a safe. Um, but you can use a similar pattern like that if you had some Optimism tokens on some other chain to go and see like what is their balance on that chain. And based on that, calculate their voting power within the optimism governance system. Um, so that would tie it together if you actually have them sitting in one place. And it's not for trading. It's like an embassy. Uh, so you like sent Arbitrum some tokens or something. And they're going to use that to vote because, you know, everybody's on the same team of making the L2 ecosystem better and the Ethereum ecosystem better. Uh, that wouldn't isolate it from governance, which I think is kind of cool. So if you're curious about that, we can talk more about it. It's almost done audit and should launch pretty soon. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'd love to I'd love to DM you after this space. All right, awesome. So we are going to move on just for the sake of time. So now we are going to talk about optimism. So that question was a very good path right into what we wanted to talk about. There is a lot going on over at Optimism right now, as I'm sure many of you have seen. So first and foremost, the airdrop is now live and claimable. So let's talk about it. How did it go? Uh, Zane, do you want to take this one? Yeah, yeah, happy um, to hop in. So uh, first off, um, yesterday was extremely exciting for us, one of our largest launches uh, to date, and it's been a ton of effort across everyone uh, at OP Labs to ensure that uh, the governance launch was fair, um, it, was, it made sense, um, and that people could access it. Um, of course, uh, there were a lot of hangups yesterday, um, and that's expected. Um, you know, as we're building towards this new, new future. But I think we're all like looking at some of the on-chain data uh, today. We're all extremely excited. One, seeing like the number of people that were uh, able to claim. I think that's over 40% of all tokens have been uh, uh, claimed, which is incredible, especially on day one, especially considering uh, what we were trying to do is uh, really incentivize people who, yes, had used optimism, but also showed... Um, interest in p other types of public goods, whether that's uh, committing to Gitcoin grants and stuff like that, who might have not actually used Optimism. So seeing a 40% claim rate was extremely exciting. Um, a lot of that transaction volume uh, went through um, various bridges like across, so extremely appreciative of um, y'all's support on that side. Um, v, anything you want to add on there? Yeah, um, tomorrow, I mean, tomorrow, Jesus, yesterday uh, was certainly a long day for everyone on the team. Um, there was a, a few things we definitely could have done, done better and a lot of lessons I think we learned about um, dropping an airdrop. And lucky for everyone, we're the uh, perpetual airdrop machine. So this is not the first nor the last airdrop. I mean, this is the first but not the last airdrop we will do. Um, so we'll definitely incorporate all the lessons we learned from this one into making the uh, next airdrop, so 50 times smoother and like more uh, amicable and palatable. But yeah, no, we definitely, definitely learned a lot um, on like how to run a successful airdrop. Um, and yeah, keep your eyes open for the, uh, uh, what are we calling it? We're going to do like a whole debrief about how it went, what we did wrong, what we could have done better, generally the lessons learned. Um, and yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be very interesting. 
Yeah, uh, from the across side, would love to hear. Um, did y'all see any spike on your side? Yes, we actually saw a huge amount of volume. Um, with Optimus, it was nearly five times the volume for almost every token. Um, so that was unbelievable. Like, for example, USDC went from 60K to 290K. So we experienced a huge, huge surge of volume. So it was pretty extraordinary. Yeah, I love, love to see that. Also saw like some of the APYs uh, for bridge liquidity was up significantly given like, um, yeah, the number of transfers that we're going through. So really cool to see. There's also um, just a in the weeds thing that I think is kind of interesting. Uh, so Across is using UMA and UMA is asynchronous by design that you have this challenge window, um, which is really useful for cross chain stuff especially when one of the chains uh, starts behaving um, in a way that is different from like the norm. So with all of the activity on optimism, um, I think the, the number of blocks that would go through over a particular time period uh, was much higher than previously. Um, so with Across, it's trying to gather up all of the deposits on every chain. And there's a lot of like big problems that are like too extensive to get into on the call, but Nick is very familiar with them because he's the main person <laughs> addressing a lot of it with uh, our bot infrastructure. Um, but I think there were actually some deposits that were initially missed in what we call the data worker, which is going and uh, like bundling up all the deposits from every chain. But because there's a dispute window, uh, once it caught up with the current state, uh, it was able to kind of dispute that earlier state and make sure that every uh, deposit was actually included in the relay. So that's about to go through UMA's governance system. And that doesn't slow down relays at all. And it doesn't even really slow down relay or uh, refunds. Um, but it's just really interesting that there's a, like inherently a like an error catching mechanism there that when things get crazy, like yesterday, uh, the system has a, a lot of cushion there, um, which is really important because chain time is different. Like, you know, each chain is not keeping the same time. Solana is really not keeping the same time at the moment. <laughs> uh, so I, I don't know. I think that was kind of cool. Just like a technical thing to see as like a stress test that no deposits are missed. Definitely. And so moving on from the across to or sorry, the OP token um, for the Optimism Collective, um, I was listening into the AMA that you all had yesterday in which you called the Optimism Collective, the meta community of communities. Um, I thought that was an awesome way of putting it. Um, and I would love to just hear more for the people in the audience who maybe aren't really too aware of what the Optimism Collective is. Could you give us a bit of a rundown? Yeah. So um, first of all, great question. Uh, the Optimism Collective is this idea that um, a community, especially one like Optimism, is built up of just you know an infinite number of sub-communities. So the idea behind the uh, Optimism Collective is to kind of give all of these communities within our community um, their own like voice and space to like actually make governance decisions and be involved. Um, and so <laughs> just for the very brief TLD TLDR of our governance system, uh, we have a two house uh, system. So the one house is the token voting house. So that's what launched yesterday. Um, so that is just your normal uh, one token, one vote kind of uh, system where, you know, if you you can buy lots of tokens and then you have a lot of vote, uh, you can delegate all that kind of good stuff. And then the other token, uh, the other uh, voting house, which uh, is a bit more novel, is our citizen house. So the idea in our citizen house is that we have all of these amazing sub communities within optimism, these opcos, as we're calling them. Uh, and um, these opcos have within them, you know, highly engaged uh, uh, community members, participants, teams, etc. Um, so pretty much the idea behind these opcos is that we're going to give these opcos citizenships to distribute to their most active community members um, such that we can actually start building up a real like one person, one vote kind of voting system through these opcos uh, that can then distribute uh, retroactive public goods because token voting 
funny enough, does not align incentives well for distributing money to public goods. So we needed to come up with uh, a new novel mechanism, and that is our Citizens House, which is all of these opcos collectively working together um, to distribute the citizenships. Uh, obviously, the system is not live yet, the opcos, um, and is still very much a work in progress that we are like ramping up to being more production and actually getting it out the door. But it is a really exciting experiment in governance that I definitely, like, if you want to get involved, um, you should definitely come join our Discord, join our uh, community generally uh, in the broader sense, and, you know, start <laughs> start getting super active in some of these uh, projects. Uh, I'm sure, Zane, you have something you want to you wanna add on top of that. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll repeat what I said earlier, because we are... I'm smiling here, so apologies, but I we are just so excited uh, for the community to really get involved. Um, we're trying to make it as easy as possible for people to, you know, share their thoughts. What we're building here, right, is not just for us. It's not just for, um, you know, a certain set group of people. It is for everyone. It is for the future of the internet. Um, and in building that, we definitely want to hear people's voices. Um, that's why you'll see we're reaching out to people to talk both to developers and also people who are using the network to really understand what they want. And we definitely need that um, advice when it comes to governance as well. Um, so please hop over onto our Discord. Um, come DM me. I'm, I'm open to chat. Um, and yeah, hop over to the forums. And uh, there's a lot coming both on the governance side as well as um, both like on the network, like the actual protocol upgrades, as well as what we're doing on the website. So just a lot going on on the optimism side that we're ex super excited to share uh, with y'all and build together. I just want to echo that we're really excited. So we recently had a lot of talks about what we're going to do next regarding this. And uh, yeah, I, just like getting the chance to help build this, I, I couldn't possibly be more excited. It's some of the most ambitious um, initiatives I've ever seen in the crypto space. So definitely stay tuned. And something interesting, too, that I saw was um, the idea of vote delegation. Could you just explain that a little bit more in depth for our listeners? Um, who do you think is the best to take that one? Maybe V? Or... So, uh... Yeah, hold on. Can you ask the question again? Let me let me compose my thoughts. <laughs> yeah, no worries. So I was just wondering if you could explain just vote delegation a little bit more um, with oh, the token. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Right. Yeah. No, it's just been a long day. Um. <laughs> so delegation, because there seems to be quite a few misconstrued about what delegation actually means. So the optimism token is delegatable, which just means that you have this token, and it kind of has two properties to it. The one is it's a transferable token that you can take and transfer and sell and all that great tokeny stuff. And the other is that it has a voting power, right? Like each token has like a measurable voting power, which right now is one to one. Nice. Um, so the idea behind delegation is that you might own some of this token, but you don't necessarily have the time or energy to actually keep up with governance, read all the governance forms, read all the discussions, engage in the discussions, like do the research to make an informed decision. Most people just generally do not have that free time. So the idea behind delegation is you can say, OK, well, I trust that um, <laughs> I trust that John is going to go and do the research because John would definitely do the research and make informed decisions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delegate my voting power to John. And all that means is that I have given him the um, like the, the power to vote for me. I still own my token. It is still my token. I can still transfer it. I can trade it. I can do whatever. It is my token. However, John holds the voting rights for my token. So the idea behind delegation is to give someone else the power to vote for you without giving up the right to your token. We also have a nice uh, delegation system whereby you can re-delegate at any time. So if John starts going off the rails because he's having a bit of a hard time or stops voting, then I can re-delegate either to myself or to another delegate to um, get that voting power back in responsible hands. Thank you. 
I think that was a beautiful in-depth explanation. So thank you for that. So um, yeah, just as a summary, the Optimism um, Collective has a two-house governance, Token House and Citizens House. And with Citizens House, I know that's also been referred to as preferences of the people, which I think is a pretty cool and eloquent way of putting it. So moving from that, um, you know, we have this real beautiful, happy, blended family right now of Across users listening and Optimism users listening. So how can Across users get involved in the Optimism Collective who are listening to this right now, who are perhaps new to Optimism and want to get involved? That is a fantastic question, but I'm going to let Zane take it because I have been talking. Uh, thank you, V. So I think the first thing is definitely jump, hop on our Discord head over to our website. Um, you can reach that at optimism.io. Um, there's a ton of information on there. And we're gonna be adding like um, some more easy onboarding for um, how to start using Optimism, um, help exploring some of the incredibly like unique apps that are Optimism, both on the NFT side, as well as within the DeFi side that I'm just, it, it it's really cool just to kind of go from, you know, transacting on L1 where, you know, you have those 30 seconds to a minute, uh, transaction weights to almost or near instant transaction finality uh, where it's so smooth. Um, so definitely doing a lot more to kind of bring those projects um, into people's view, um, as well as, like I mentioned earlier, just hopping on the Discord. Um, there's a lot going on there and V has done an incredible job uh, kind of building out the Discord where it's kind of its own city in there, right? So whether you're in interested in governance, whether you're trying to build your own uh, project and trying to get funding. There's a lot of information there. Um, so if you are curious, if you have questions, um, if you just want to learn, head over um, to both our website. Um, our Twitter is a great follow, Discord. Um, and then once you're ready to get involved in governance, uh, whether that's, you know, just opining uh, as a commenter or really crafting that first proposal, um, Discourse is our forum. Um, so we'd love to see you over there. And I'll, I'll keep pushing this one, but if you have any feedback at all, um, please don't hesitate to reach out. And we're super, super stoked um, to get y'all involved. Um, Will or V, anything y'all want to add? Um, yeah, I just wanted to add, I guess, kind of back to the question that was asked earlier about how the airdrop went. Um, I guess for, for me, uh, since I was kind of an engineer, more I wasn't able to pay attention to the community response much because I was very much putting out fires. But today when I woke up, um, what I saw was a, a lot of people talking about governance um, in relation to the airdrop um, instead of just only talking about the token, which was really cool to see because that was our number one goal of the, of the airdrop, the number one goal of the UI we made for the airdrop. So it's just really great to see more and more people getting excited about governance. And I think as we reach like a critical mass of people who care about governance, as um, we build this community um, that you can see being built, like as we speak, like on Discord, thanks thanks to uh, V. Um, yeah, I think you'll, you'll, you'll find it to be like a place that people just enjoy being at. Um, even, even if they're, even if they, it's not just about like the, the the price or it's not about like the the blockchain like governance necessarily it's it's it i think you'll eventually see this become a community um so i would definitely encourage everyone to join because it, it will be a um <laughs> for lack of better words it will be it'll be very fun so so definitely come join us i do also think that across as a whole is probably going to um submit an application as part of phase one uh, for the governance fund. Um, I think, I mean, L2 is the whole raison d'etre for across to exist. And we want to promote um, more people coming to L2s and uh, actively using it. So um, I think there's a lot of alignment there. Uh, personally, I, you know, just my opinion, it would probably make sense to give people more incentives to get from L1 to L2. And then once they're there, just life gets a lot easier, provided there's enough liquidity. Like it's kind of the chicken and the egg thing. And I do hope that across providing really easy L2 to L2 bridging that's super cheap and really fast um, should 
make it so that people don't feel like they need to go back to L1 and that arbitragers in particular will feel comfortable adding liquidity to um, lending pools and, and swap pools on L2, knowing that they can get back to L1 fast if they need to uh, during market events. Because I had a theory like a year or so ago that, um, you know, AMM activity on L2s would just be bonkers because uh, fees are so low that you get a lot of these free arbitrage things. Um, but that hasn't really happened yet. And I think it's just like the bridging problem. So, you know, we just want to get people out there, get them to get a taste of it. Uh, the bridging problem is, you know, really addressed super well by a cross V2. So there shouldn't be any fear to just get your funds off of L1 and onto L2. Yeah, John, just want to add on. I think that hypothesis is pretty strong around, you know, the problem is getting people onto the L2. Um, just after talking to people um, ac across the ecosystem, whether, you know, they're traditional like DeFi, DGENs or kind of new to crypto um, and only have uh, transacted on L1, the common piece of feedback we get is that transacting on L2 is a phenomenal experience, whether that's the user experience of uh, some of the apps that people are building on the L2 or the actual like protocol speed and fee experience. So I think, you know, what you guys are doing at Across uh, with this V2, with making it more accessible um, and love um, what y'all are doing with, um, uh, what is it called? The partial fills for relayers. That is such a phenomenal and unique idea that I think it's going to uh, help get a lot of people who are on the edge about bridging over, um, getting them over to the experience and seeing how cool um, transacting on L2 can, uh, can feel and be. Yeah, amazing. Okay, so we are going to start to wrap up um, just because we are starting to go a little bit over time. So, you know, I did want to give an opportunity for like one or two people to ask any questions they have about anything that we talked about, um, optimism related, and then we will end. So yeah, one to two questions you can request to speak if you would like, and I'll bring you up on the stage. Okay. Sam, can you, or Sanast, um, can you hear us? Yeah, hi. It's uh, Samask. So I um, uh, had a question about uh, the delegation function in the collective. Um, what happens if uh, you uh, saw an opportunity like a trade uh, that uh, seemed like, uh, you know, uh, a PA looks like, uh, uh, you know, you, sh you would be able to um, uh, offload uh, tokens that you claimed and then bought at a lower uh, lower rate, and that's given you uh, a larger bag in you know uh, uh, in total. Um, does that affect uh, the delegation that you've given to um, let's say uh, another person uh, with your OP tokens? How does that uh, tally up? Or how, what, what frequency is that uh, uh, looked at? Yeah, so that's a great question. So every time, if, if the token leaves your wallet, you have effectively undelegated your tokens. So like the way it works behind the scenes is that it is storing your delegation against your address and the delegate's address. So as soon as you trade that token or sell it or put it in Uniswap and it is no longer at your address, you've effectively broken that link. So only tokens actively in your wallet can be delegated. So the way our delegation, our, our voting system and cycles are going to work is we're going to have a snapshot and then we're going to have a voting cycle for, uh, I think they're two weeks long. Uh, and then afterwards, uh, you know, for the next voting cycle, we'll take the next snapshot. So if you want to um, go trade, put it in Uniswap, whatever you want to do with your token, um, what you should do is get all of your token into your wallet delegate to someone, wait till the snapshot is taken, and then you have two weeks to go trade and do whatever, and then when the next snapshot is going to get taken, put it all back in your wallet, re-delegate it again, uh, and then um, you can do whatever you want afterwards. So as soon as you trade your token, the delegation link is broken, and you will need to re-delegate once the token is back in your wallet. Great question, though. 
Sounds good. And snapshot dates are always shared uh, in advance. Yeah, exactly. Snapshot uh, dates will be, we'll tweet them out and you will know about them beforehand. Great. Great. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay, and I know we do have to wrap up the space now. Um, I did see that we had requests for questions. Um, if anyone has questions about anything optimism related, where can we direct them? The optimism Discord or yes, yeah. Oh, oh go ahead, B. All right, um, yeah, they can uh, go to optimism.io. Uh, we have a link to our Discord on there. Link to our Twitter. Um, and then, like I said, if you have any questions um, that you don't can't find the answer to, feel free to reach out to me directly. All right, perfect. So it does look like we are going to start wrapping up our space. Um, thank you so much to everyone who joined our space today. Um, if you're hyped up about Across and Optimism and you're looking to get involved, make sure to use Across when bridging to Optimism and to other L2s. And make sure to use Optimism for your L2 needs and check out both of our doc sites to learn more. Um, and yeah, that is about it. So thank you so much for everyone who joined. We appreciate all of you and we hope you have a nice day. Thanks so much for having us. Thanks everybody. All right, bye everyone.